guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today, we are going to be reviewing new and or viral beauty products. And this is a video that I typically like to post every one and a half to two months, depending on what is going on in the beauty industry and what sorts of products people are hyping up. But there have been so many new launches and viral products lately that I had to split this into two separate videos this time around so that we have a part one and a part two. So there's no different rhyme or reason as to which products are in which video. I just tried to create an even split between all beauty categories like skincare, makeup, and hair care so that we're covering all of those in each video. Today is obviously part one. My next upload will be part two. Let's jump right into it. Starting off with skincare products first, we have the Fenty Skin Melt Off Jelly Oil Makeup Melting Cleanser. This has tons of nice ingredients worth highlighting, including shea butter and so many different oils like sunflower oil, safflower, soybean, adansonia digitata, watermelon, elderberry, cucumber, and oat kernel. It is not fragrance free. It does have added fragrance and fragrant components. And I just don't like the smell of this. Ugh. It's like lemon and essential oils and I, you guys know I don't like that kind of smell for skincare. No. In terms of texture, like the product title suggests, it really does have a jelly oil hybrid consistency. It's something that I found to be really unique and fun to use. I liked applying it to my skin. It felt really nice and smooth and it wasn't greasy. However, this just was not effective for me at all in terms of removing eye makeup and wasn't effective enough for face makeup removal. Typically when I'm using a really nice oil cleanser, I'll rub that into my skin. It will fully break my makeup down and then with one swipe of my microfiber towel, everything's gone and I don't have residue left. But after that initial swipe with this cleanser from Fenty, I still had makeup left on my skin, which hasn't happened to me honestly in so long. And it definitely did not fully remove my mascara, which just makes this an automatic no-go for me because if I am using an oil cleanser or a cleansing balm, I want to be able to remove all of the makeup on my face with that one product. Next up, we have the Road Glazing Milk, which of course went viral because anything that Hailey Bieber launches through Road goes viral. And I have to be honest, I was very pleasantly surprised by the breadth of nice ingredients in this product. This has vitamin E, multiple forms of hyaluronic acid, ceramide NP, ceramide AP, and ceramide EOP beta glucan, copper gluconate, magnesium aspartate, linoleic acid, linolenic acid, zinc gluconate, and cholesterol. So overall, a lot of really nice hydrating and replenishing ingredients. This has a very liquidy, milky consistency, and while it feels good, it just wasn't what I was expecting. I think because this is called a glazing milk and because it's Hailey Bieber and I feel like she's really into products like that, I thought that this would be so incredibly soft and silky and smooth, like feel like liquid milky silk. And again, it felt good, but it just wasn't anything spectacular in that department. And I would say that the same thing holds true for the glow that this gives my skin. I was expecting my skin to look a lot glowier after using this and I get like a little bit of a boost there, but really again, nothing spectacular. So not a bad product. Again, it has tons of incredible ingredients. And I think that it's something that's easy to incorporate into your skincare routine, apply it before moisturizer, get some added benefit with all those ingredients. But I I did find that I just wasn't nearly as obsessed as I expected to be with this which was a bummer because I was really excited. Next, we have the Tula Gold and Glow Get It. Wait, what? Tula Gold Glow plus Get It. Is that what I, yeah, okay. That's just a very strange name. Cooling and Brightening Eye Balm. Standout ingredients in this include aloe juice, xylitol, a probiotic ferment, caffeine, hyaluronic acid, rosehip oil, watermelon apple and blueberry extract, lentil extract, lactic acid, and sodium PCA. This does not have any added fragrance but it's not technically fragrance free because it does have added menthol derivatives, which add a fragrance and can definitely be sensitizing. Upon initial application, I was like, oh, this feels really nice. It definitely did feel very cooling and it has a really slippery texture that I just enjoyed applying. But the texture was a lot thinner than I was anticipating given that this is called a balm. It's something that kind of just dries down to nothing and I really didn't find it to be moisturizing. The huge 
huge no for this for me was when the cooling sensation turned into a burning sensation. It definitely was just those menthol derivatives irritating my skin and the skin around my eyes where I applied this started to feel a little bit tight and I did notice some splotchy redness coming through where I applied this. It definitely does give a nice subtle glow but because of everything else this is just a huge pass for me. Next up is the Isentry Purple Protector Onion New Pair Sunscreen. I was very thrilled off when I saw that onion was in the title of this sunscreen. It's definitely a product that has gone viral, but I feel like I've seen it much more for hair care than I have for skincare, and I haven't really been able to find a lot of research on that ingredient for the skin. I did find a page on Special Chem for onion extract, and according to this, the main benefits are that this is an anti-inflammatory ingredient that soothes the skin and has antioxidant properties. So TBD on how much that would benefit your skin, especially via the this sunscreen, but other than that, this is an SPF 40 with a PA rating of plus plus plus. This contains a combination of filters like homosalate, octa <laughs> what? Octanoxate, ethyl hexyl salicylate, octocrylene, avobenzone, and titanium dioxide. And then other inactive ingredients worth mentioning include niacinamide, this plant extract that I simply cannot pronounce, lecithin, adenosine, allantoin, vitamin E, and panthenol. This has a creamier texture than a lot of my favorite Asian sunscreens and while it doesn't feel greasy when I apply this it is very emollient and it doesn't have that nice quick dry down that again a lot of my favorite Asian sunscreens do. It does have a nice glowy finish but it's just not my all-time favorite. There are others that I far prefer to this so if you are in the market for some incredible Asian sunscreens I'll list a couple of videos below where I review tons. Tons. Another Rode product is the Rode Peptide Lip Treatment in the fragrance, do they call this fragrance scent flavor? Who knows? Strawberry glazed donut. These peptide lip treatments do have very nice ingredients, including shea butter, vitamin E, vitamin C, a tripeptide, babasu oil, cupachu butter, and lactic acid. I was really excited to test this out because based on the videos and photos that they showed of Haley applying this in the marketing campaign, I thought that this was going to have a very light tint and be like a light reddish strawberry color, but it's not tinted at all. It's just their original clear formula, but with a different size. While I do not get donut from this really at all, I love the way that this smells. To me, it's more like strawberry shortcake, or you know what this really reminds me of? is Frankenberry cereal. You know, the Halloween cereals, the pink one. Oh my God, it's so good. So I'm addicted to this right now. I do want to say that ever since I purchased that large bundle of four different, uh, what do they call it? I think they maybe just renamed it vanilla. It was their original birthday cake flavor of this peptide lip treatment. And then that was limited edition. They discontinued it. They came back with it, but renamed it, I believe vanilla. And I was obsessed with it when I had originally purchased it. So I bought four and I was so excited. I think I told you guys about that either here on YouTube or Instagram for sure. But those went grainy on me very quickly. And when I looked into that, I saw it's actually something people have been complaining about for a while. And it's a common complaint with this lip treatment. And I had no idea that that was even a thing. So I emailed the brand, told them what was going on, and I just was like emailing their regular customer service. And they said that it's something, actually, let me just pull that up. Okay, so this is what they said. Our peptide lip treatment contains waxes that can occasionally harden with temperature changes. This does not affect safety or performance of the product. Any grainy feel should smooth out upon application. And then they wanted me to provide a batch number. And once I did that, then they were able to give me a free shipping label to send them back and then they said that they could either refund me or send me more. So I was like, please send me more because I love them. The only thing I want to note about that is that when they said any grainy feel should smooth out upon application, I didn't experience that. The granules like stayed there. So they didn't smooth out. I had to wipe them away from my lips. Thankfully, I have not had that happen to me yet with this one, but it could still happen as I continue to use it. So I'll definitely keep you guys posted. I just wanted to let you know in case you were on the fence about this lip treatment, maybe you were torn between this and another brand. You might want to go with the other brand if you just don't feel like taking the gamble. 
I totally get that. That's fair. Oh man, did this go viral. This is the new Dr. Dennis Gross Derm Infusions Plump and Repair Lip Treatment. So this is intended to be an all-in-one lip treatment that not only plumps, but then also offers you long-term benefits with all of the other ingredients added to this. So the main plumping ingredient is something called benzyl nicotinate. That, from what I can see, is a pretty common plumping ingredient. And when I was looking into the safety of that ingredient, I wasn't really finding much other than it can potentially cause irritation or an allergic reaction. The other ingredients added that are what make this more of a treatment include things like coconut oil, squalane, ectoin, multiple forms of hyaluronic acid, peptides, portulaca pilosa extracts, Centella asiatica, trahalo, spisabolo, watermelon extract, apple extract, avocado oil, and glucomannan. Glucomannan? Glucomannan one of the two. To me, this feels like a super, super thin oil. Like, you know when you apply a lip oil and then it's faded a ton and it's almost gone and you have some residue left? Like, that is what this feels like to me, but right away when you apply it. So for me, this is just not something that's conditioning at all. There's nothing occlusive about it or long lasting in terms of conditioning or making my lips feel moisturized. I don't get that at all. It definitely does plump my lips. I was actually quite surprised by the plumping effect that this gave. I wasn't really expecting to see much because I feel like I've tried so many lip plumpers that just tingle and feel milty, milty, no, minty, but then don't actually do anything in terms of adding volume. But this definitely does. And not not only did it add volume, but I feel like it also made my lips just look more flushed and pink, which I really liked. I was like, oh, it's like no lipstick lipstick. But I will say that it definitely does make my lips feel tight and tingly. I think on the back they say, let's see. Yeah, it's common to feel a slight tingle. I wouldn't say it's a slight tingle. I would say it was pretty, pretty intense. It didn't hurt. Like I wasn't like, oh my God, ow, but it, it was uncomfortable for sure. And this did not last longer than an hour and a half for me. That's like pushing it. I feel like the volume, the plumping effect really lasted more like an hour total and then it was completely gone. So I don't understand the hype behind products like this. Like, yes, it worked, but you would have to constantly reapply this, which means that your lips would be burning every single hour. And because this isn't conditioning, I, I just don't get it. It's not for me. All right, let's move on to makeup. First up, we have the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. This has a very interesting texture because it's creamier and because of how quickly it dries down and how tacky it gets upon drying, it makes it feel like it's a little bit of a heavier concealer than the formula actually is. Like if it didn't have that tackiness to it, I feel like it would feel a lot lighter weight, but it does dry down very, very fast. So I would only apply one side at a time, lay down the product, immediately blend it out, set it with powder if you want to, and then move on to the other side. Otherwise, it is very difficult to evenly blend because it just like gets stuck, a little sticky. This is supposed to have medium coverage and be buildable, and I would agree with that. I think that it's like not fully up to full coverage because you would have to use quite a bit of product, but like medium slash full. And it's claimed to have a natural skin-like finish. I do think that this looks really beautiful upon initial application. I was actually very surprised by how much I loved it at first because I feel like I wasn't hearing the best things and I felt like it looked pretty flawless. But as the day went on, I definitely started to notice that it was patching up a tiny bit, clinging in areas, looking a little bit dry in certain areas. And it definitely did slightly settle into lines for me. So while it wasn't anything that I thought looked horrible or like completely a mess by the end of the day, especially from a normal distance, I was like, this actually still doesn't look bad. When I was looking at it up close and getting my before and after footage, I was like, okay, yeah, it doesn't look great. It definitely didn't hold up in the way that the brand Brand claimed it would so I totally get why people are not loving this which is a really big bummer because again that initial application I thought was super pretty next up we have several blushes to talk about as always these are the new nude sticks nudies matte and core glow all over face plumping peptide blushes my god say that 12 times fast the shades that I have here are rose glow magenta magic and ice pink and the one thing I was really bummed about is the magenta magic shade came kind of 
what would I say about that? Like messed up? I'll show you compared to another one. So that core right there is flush in the same line with the color around it. But as you can see with that magenta one, it's not. So that meant that I wasn't able to get any of that core mixed in with the color, which is definitely the purpose of this product. You're supposed to mix it all together to get that really pretty final result. So that's really sad because I was really excited to use that color. But Rose Glow is definitely still a beautiful shade. And I ended up loving the way that this looked anyway. Anyway, so it's okay. This is very creamy and emollient, but it does dry down to feel lighter weight on the skin. So while it's something that feels like it's going to be heavier at first, I don't think this sits heavily on the skin once it's fully applied and dried down. It has buildable pigment, but I love that this is more of a natural looking blush unless you build it up quite a bit. And with all of the product mixed together, the color around it and that middle core, it has a really beautiful, naturally radiant sheen that I love. I do think that it's gorgeous. Nude Sticks products, I feel like they are all the rage right now because of Sophia Richie, but I was loving them before. Just saying. Tower 28 came out with this bright, cool toned pink shade during all of the crazy Barbie launches. Oh my goodness, there were so many. Can I get this open with my short stubby nails? So this is their Beach Please Lip and Cheek Color in the shade Dream Hour. This has a very balmy consistency. It's pretty thick, almost a little bit sticky. So I was expecting to hate the way that it felt on my cheeks, but surprisingly it didn't feel like grossly gross greasy or anything like that. I find this to be pretty buildable and versatile in terms of coverage. It's something that I can wear as more of a sheer wash of color or a fun bright pop of pink. And again, even though I was expecting this to feel and look greasy, I don't think that it looks greasy at all. It has more of a luminous or a radiant finish. However, it does not fully dry down for me. It does stay feeling kind of tacky on the cheeks. So I actually think that this is a really pretty product, but I shouldn't have closed this. Oh my gosh. I just I just hate the smell of it. It just smells like an oil, like a waxy crayon or an oil or something. I just don't like that. And I'm just big on the whole process of applying makeup feeling really nice and amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like if I have a product like this that I'm like, gosh, I just don't like the smell. And I have other cream blushes that are just as beautiful, if not more beautiful, that don't smell. I would just rather reach for those and pass on this. Then we have the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Highlighting Blushes. I am so into blush lighters lately. Like that is probably my newest favorite makeup category. So I was super excited to test these out. The texture of them, like the formula is very soft and powdery. I have the shades Opal Glow, Rose Glow, and mauve glow. And I'm not sure if it's just the fact that two of these shades are really light, but they do pull quite a bit more like a highlight on my cheeks than a blush. Like it does look beautiful, don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's just a little bit too reflective with not enough pigment for me compared to my all-time favorite blush lighters. Like if this was not quite as highlightery and had a little bit more of that blush color pulling through, it would be perfect. One of the three shades I was sent is deeper, the mauve glow shade, but I felt like that was gonna be too like deep and taupey on my cheeks. So I'm not sure on this yet. I'm going to look and see if they have other shades that are kind of in between these. And then if they do, I will test those out because I feel like I would love those. But right now these don't quite work. They don't quite hit. What is going on with the hair today? Whatever. The Say Glossy Bounce Lip Oils are the lip oils that broke my heart. When I first saw these, I was like, oh God, we're in trouble because they just look like my kind of lip product. Like even in the tube, I was like, oh, these look like sheer popsicle lips, which I am so obsessed with. I can't remember if I already got footage of me swatching these, so I'll just swatch them right now. Oh my God, and look at how beautiful these are. Like, you guys know this is my kind of thing. That was probably the creepiest face ever. So these shades are Kiss, Play, and Dip. Feast your eyes. Oh, that's good stuff. And when I first apply these, they feel so plush, so soft. They have beautiful shine. They're everything I love at first. The amount of pigment is perfect for me. Again, you guys know I just love a sheer shiny lip. It's 
everything to me. But unfortunately, if I wear this by itself, like with a lip liner, it just does not last long for me. It fades very quickly. It lasts longer for sure if I have some sort of lipstick underneath it. That tends to be the case usually with any sort of lip oil or lip gloss that is faster to fade. If I put it on top of a lipstick, it's going to last longer. But by itself, it doesn't last long and it definitely does not leave my lips feeling conditioned once it fades away. Like I feel like I need to put some Vaseline on or something and it really smells and tastes like oil. Like I can taste it right now. <laughs> the dramatics over a lip oil, like get over it. But I just wanted to love these so bad because I just felt like they were gonna be perfect. So when they weren't, and it was the oily taste, I was like, dang, it was so close, but no. Like, I just wanted to love these so bad, but I cannot deal with a really oily taste like that. It just really, it's very off-putting. I don't know if that's just me. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below. Maybe that doesn't bother you. If not, and you're okay with a fast fade, then maybe you will love it. And I mean, that's great. I hope that you do if that's the case. I just wish that I did too. No, I'm actually like eating oil. We have had a few new eyeshadow palette launches recently that have been all wearable shades, which is something I feel like we haven't seen in such a long time. I have been waiting for this because shades like this, excuse me, I don't wanna blind you guys, are the only shades that I ever wear anymore. So the second I saw this, I was like, uh-huh, I'm gonna have to buy this. This is the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 3 Matte Eyeshadow Palette, and it is absolutely beautiful. It's a mix of, I believe, do they say cool, neutral, and warm? Okay, they just say warm and cool nudes. So they have all of these matte shades right now, and then they do also come with two very deep cream shades that I do not touch at all. I don't have a need for anything like that given how dark they are, but I think the rest of the palette is absolutely beautiful I have been using this so much I have definitely been staying more over here as you can see than dipping into these deeper ones I of course would love if it was just like all lighter shades But I know that I am not the only skin tone that they are catering to if you've never used Patrick Ta shadows before I will say that they are very velvety and dense and because of that they do have quite a bit of fallout in the pan but once they're applied to my face I don't have them like falling out all over my cheeks or anything like that they blend beautifully they have a perfect amount of pigment they last all day they're just beautiful so I've been loving this but I've also been loving this which is arguably the ugliest palette to launch in a very long time no offense Kosas but come on what in the heck is this and also this I feel just does not at all represent what's inside it so if we ignore the packaging and just look at the shadows, again, this is just a very wearable, fully matte palette that I knew I wanted right when I saw it. Because I feel like I have only been using the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette for like almost two years at this point, and I'm ready to try some new things out. So I was really excited to get this in PR as well. Well, not as well, because I bought Patrick Tom myself, but you know what I mean. And I gotta be honest, I didn't have high hopes for the quality of these shadows. That probably was just because of the packaging because it looks kind of cheap, but these shadows are actually really nice. They're also extremely smooth, but they're not nearly as thick and dense as the Patrick Ta shadows. They're a lot lighter weight, so they don't have that same kind of fallout. They're really beautiful and blendable and buildable, and I really enjoy most of these shades. What I really like about this is that I feel like a lot of these shades mix really well together. That is definitely what I've been doing. I'll just kind of like throw a bunch of the shades together and I feel like it always ends up looking really, really nice on my lid. I of course have dipped into this for a shadow winged liner. It works great for that purpose. Oh wait, did I say fully matte? There is one non-matte shadow in this. I haven't even used this, I'm gonna be totally honest. Like it's pretty, it's not bad. It's just, I can, you know, nothing remarkable for a metallic. I would rather that just be another matte so I could use it. But everything else in here, I've really been loving, I have. I feel like I haven't had these long enough to really decide which of the two is my favorite. And I also am currently testing out the newer Danessa Myricks palette. Is that called the underground palette? I forget. So I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on them if you want me to rank them or pick my favorite out of all three. 
I'll try my best. Stay tuned. We are nearing the end here. Four products left. The first of those four is the Benefit Fan Fest Mascara. This has soft bristles and a wand that is slightly curved. The formula of this is something that I feel leans more wet than dry, but overall I think it's just right. Like it's perfectly in the middle of those two things. I don't love a really wet, heavy mascara. I don't love a super dry mascara. Right in between, of course, is best. And I feel like this is really great. Something that I really appreciate about this as I have been testing out a bunch of higher-end mascaras for an upcoming showdown is that this attaches the right amount of product to my lashes, if that makes any sense at all. Like there are some mascaras that because of the shape of the wand and the type of the bristles and the formula just don't cling to my lashes very well. And this one does. It just, again, like, adds on the right amount of product. I do end up having to separate a few of my lashes after applying this, but other than that, I definitely don't think it's too clumpy. You get really nice long lashes with this. I think that it's really good and definitely one of the better ones I have tried at that higher end price point for sure. Moving on to hair. First up, we have the Day Star Gloss Shine Treatment, which is supposed to add dazzling shine, create silky smoothness, and boost hydration. This has shea butter, castor oil, citric acid, prickly pear oil, and moringa oil in it. I'm not sure if this has enough citric acid to offer the benefits that citric acid can if it's in a higher amount or if it's just in this formula for the purpose of being a pH adjuster. It was kind of towards the middle, so I'm not sure because I, of course, did not formulate this product. But in case, I thought I would call that out. And this is actually something that is meant to be a pre-wash treatment. So originally I thought this was like a post-wash leave-in cream. It is a pre-wash glossing treatment that you are supposed to apply to unwashed dry hair, leave on for at least 20 minutes up to overnight, and then follow up with your wash routine. So I did apply this that way. At first I was like, I don't want to do that. Maybe I can try to apply it as like a conditioner in the shower. And I was like, nope use it as they suggest, give it a fair review. So I did follow their suggestion. I sectioned off my hair, I applied it and left it in overnight. And I don't love applying thick creams like this to dry unwashed hair. It's something that I used to do a lot more frequently, but since kind of exclusively switching over to oils, I definitely just prefer the way that a silky oil feels in my hair. It's a nicer experience to me than something like this. And I definitely found that this left my hair feeling pretty sticky. Like once it was fully dried down and I was brushing it out the next morning, I was like, oh, ew, this doesn't feel good. But of course, nothing that's damaging. And thankfully, it wasn't something that I couldn't easily remove from my hair with the shampoo process. I really wanted to love this. I really did. If I'm remembering correctly, I loved the way it smelled. Yes, it smells really nice. But in case you couldn't tell from what I just said, I did not love this product. I definitely have much softer, silkier, shinier hair if I use an oil before washing. And I feel like my hair looks significantly less shiny when using this instead of my pre-shampoo oil. And something to note about this is that the actual product has a lot of like glitters in it. I didn't find that to be an issue in my hair, but it was just a little bit messy when I was applying it. Like I had glitter getting all over this and on my countertop. So something to be mindful of. Next is another launch in the Red Can Acidic Bond and Concentrate line. There have been a lot of launches and I feel like at this point, some things are getting a little bit redundant because they initially came out with a treatment and then after that they came out with the liquid spray that is actually not a leave-in conditioner but an in-shower spray and now we have this which is another in-shower product a mask so that's where immediately before even trying a product like this i start to be like okay we definitely don't need all of the products from this range because it's a range that has been successful they're obviously going to continue to try to make money off of it but know that right away you do not need to be using all of those different types of conditioning products that they have to offer so this is a five minute liquid mask that's supposed to be ultra conditioning detangling and offer strength repair with 16 percent of their citric acid conditioning care complex. So this of course contains citric acid, but on top of that also contains amodimethicone, which I was really excited to see because the other bonding treatment does not contain that ingredient. This was much lighter weight than I was expecting. Even though it's called a liquid mask, I was still expecting it to be thicker than it is. It is significantly more lightweight than both the conditioner and the treatment. So in terms of actual product texture, I do prefer the way that the conditioner and treatment 
treatment feel over this mask. And I felt like I was going to have to apply a ton of product in order to get my hair to be just as conditioned as it would be with those products. But don't do that. Please don't. Because the first time that I did that, my hair felt disgusting. Like it just felt like I had gunk in my hair and it looked really greasy. Like it did not look freshly cleaned. So I cannot stand when that happens to me on wash day. Cause I'm like, oh my God, now I have to wait until my next wash day to fix this. And it just drives me nuts. But when I used this a second time and applied significantly less product, number one, my hair still felt really silky in the shower. I think I was worried that it wouldn't have that like soft conditioned feel but this actually coats my hair and absorbs really really nicely so it felt silky in the shower even though I didn't use as much product and I didn't layer it on and then after my hair felt really nice it didn't have any of that like gunky weirdness it didn't look greasy it just felt really nice and soft and perfectly conditioned so definitely a product I will continue to use but I don't know that I will buy this after we'll have to see as i keep using this maybe i'll end up being obsessed with it but again i just really love the way that the treatment and conditioner feels so i feel like i'm gonna end up reaching for those more but maybe not who knows i'll let you guys know and last i was gonna say but not least but Mm, this isn't anything that spectacular. This is the new T3 curl wrap, which I was sent in PR and I just eh, don't feel like this is necessary. So the main reason that they came out with this product is to come out with an automatic, okay, an automatic twisting curling iron. So when you push this button, it will twist for you. They do have two different speeds. So if you want it to twist faster or slower, you can change that. And they also have time or second settings. So you can set this for zero seconds, five seconds, or eight seconds. And the purpose of that is supposed to be that so you can curl each section of hair for the exact same amount of time. And in theory, hopefully get a very similar result across the board versus maybe having some curls that are tighter and last longer and others that fall more quickly. So I feel like they're really nice touches. Like, they're convenient touches for sure. It can definitely enhance your curling experience, but do I think that you need to run out and purchase this for those two features? No. Something I really don't love about this is the fact that the clamp is so short and cuts off right there because I actually use a clamp the entire time I'm curling my hair and it's just not long enough for me for the way that I curl it. I have a video that is either already up or going up soon where I am getting ready for a date night and I show you guys my go-to curling process in that video. So I'll list it below if it's up. If not, stay tuned if you're curious to see that. But yeah, this just, it doesn't work out for me because of that. So I am definitely going to give this away and find a better home for it. All right, you guys, that is everything I wanted to review for part one of this video. Hopefully now you're seeing why I had to separate this into two parts. I think I actually have a few more products than this video for part two. Yeah, it's a lot. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you tested any of these products already? What has your experience been in you? Using them? Are you interested in testing anything out after watching this video? Are you going to pass on something after watching this? As always, everything I mentioned is listed and linked in my description box below in order of mention. And if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more from me, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one. Um, I forgot what I say. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. Is that my baby back there? That is my baby. Hi. Come here, Peanut. Oh my goodness. I was wondering if that was you because I heard your collar twinkling. I heard it tinkling in the back. Oh, honey. I love you so much. You're just mommy's sweetest angel. Oh, do we have a good nap? Oh, I'm so glad everyone gets to see you. Oh my gosh, baby, I love you so much. I've never loved anyone more than you. You're the most beautiful girl mom's ever seen. I love you.